Good morning, everybody. Jeremy Bernanski here with Bernanski's Vlog. It's Monday morning. It's the middle of December. This is the last live episode of 2018. Thank you guys so much for joining me this morning. If you're new to the show, go ahead and consider clicking that subscribe button and hitting the bell so you get notifications when new content drops on the channel. Because on this channel, we talk movie news, movie reviews, and a little bit more. So make sure you're following along. Also, if at any point during the show you enjoy what's going on, go ahead and give me the thumbs up because the thumbs up helps people who like movie-related shows find this movie-related show right here on YouTube. Now, we have got a lot we are going to be talking about today. So we're going to jump right into things. As we move closer to Christmas, since this is the last live episode of 2018, I want to go ahead and throw out just a quick reminder. If you have friends or family who are interested in starting their own online channel or online streaming service through Facebook Live, IGTV, YouTube, whatever the case may be, down below in the description box, you're going to find a list of Amazon links for different items I'd recommend to get them started or to get you started. So you're going to want to go ahead and check those out. Again, it's all entry level stuff, so pretty affordable for the holidays. Go ahead and consider looking at those and considering those for friends, family, or yourself for the holidays. Also, down below as we go through this episode, we're going to talk some news stories and everything else. All those articles are listed down below in the description box. So if you want to follow along, just go ahead and click the links and you can follow along there as well. Now, we're going to jump right into this week's episode because like I said, we got a lot to talk about. We're going to try and hit that 30 minutes to finish 2018 strong, and then we'll get you guys back to your Monday morning. But... Last week, I had an opportunity to check out four trailers, and I gave four trailer reviews up on the channel, so check those out in the movie trailer review playlist. I'm going to go ahead and share my favorite one right now with you guys. This was out of the four I did last week. This was definitely my favorite. Now, close to it was Happy Death Day to You, the second one. Even though I'm not a fan of horror movies, the trailer, very self-referential humor in it, and I really enjoyed it. But this one coming to you right now definitely took the top, top spot. So let's go ahead and check this one out, and then I'll be right back with you again. This is all in the movie trailer review playlist, but let's go ahead and move right into this trailer review so you can check out kind of what's available on the channel as well. And we'll go ahead and do that right now, and then we'll be right back to talk more movie news with you. So stay tuned. Hey, what's up, everybody? Jeremy Bernanski here with Bernanski's Vlog, and I just finished watching the brand new trailer for Godzilla, King of the Monsters, directed by Michael Doherty. In the second trailer, we get a lot more action and a lot more story as far as what is the point of the humans in this film, because in all honesty, the story can be terrible as long as the monster fights and the monsters look awesome in Dolby Digital or in IMAX. That's really the driving force for getting me into the theater to watch this movie, and that's what brings me back to watch these trailers, is how cool do the monsters look, how cool do the monster fights look, and so far, they're looking pretty dope in these trailers, folks, I gotta be honest. Humans, it looks like they're trying to control powers that they don't understand. Things go awry as they always do in these kinds of stories. And we get a little bit of humor as well about what is the role of the monsters from the human perspective until the humans are reminded that it's actually the monsters who are going to be in charge if they don't kind of get their act together. So overall, the trailer looks really good. Like I said, we get more of an idea of what the story is going to be and we get even more action from the monsters as well as from the humans flying around in their uh, fighter jets being chased by the monsters as well as on the ground trying to shoot them up, getting destroyed by the monsters either as they crush through their town or they fly through their town to destroy things because of the power of the wind as they're flying by. This trailer is monster movie madness. It looked great so far. Can't wait to see more from this uh, and just get it up on the big screen in IMAX so we can see these giant monsters come to life and have these epic battles. Looks good. Check out the brand new second trailer for Godzilla King of the Monsters. All right, and we're back. There you go. That was the trailer review for the new Godzilla King of the Monsters trailer. Again, I did four last week, so go ahead and check those out. They're all waiting for you. They're all up there right now on the channel in the movie trailer review playlist. Now, before we get too far into this episode, I want to just to take a quick second just to remind everybody with the holidays coming up, I got two books I'm recommending for the readers in your life. First is going to be this book right here, Eric Idle. That's right. Always look on the bright side of life, a sort of biography. 
It is a very humorous look at his experience in Hollywood as well as over in the UK working on Monty Python, going all the way through his movie career and then into Spam a lot and Broadway and everything else. Definitely check it out if you've got friends or family in your life this holiday season that enjoy reading and they enjoy reading comedic looks at life and experiences that people have had kind of going through the entertainment industry. Second book I'm going to recommend, jumping way different, this is philosophy here. Right here we got John Locke, The Second Treaties of Government and A Letter Concerning Toleration. Just finished this book the other day. If you have people in your life who enjoy philosophy and stuff like that and they're kind of more into philosophy and stuff like that than just like an entry level, definitely recommending that book. It is a complex read. It's really going to challenge the way you think about government. What is the role of government in a just society? What is the role of a just government in society? How does the church play into everything and all of religion and freedom and everything, a personal individual, just everything. It's, it's crazy stuff. I'll read you just a real quick uh, back the part on the back here. Uh, it is in a letter concerning toleration composed as early as 1667, but not published for political reasons until 1689 after the glorious revolution, Locke pleaded for religious tolerance on grounds similar to his argument for political freedom, that all men are by nature free, equal, and independent, and are entitled to freedom of thought, freedom of speech, and freedom of worship. So there you go. Really heavy stuff, but it's a very thin book. But it reads kind of like Old English, like Old Testament, like New King James and stuff like that, or Shakespeare. So you really got to pay attention, but it will definitely challenge you if you've got people who like philosophy and stuff like that. John Locke, he was a big influence uh, for the American Constitution, and he was a big influence on Thomas Jefferson. And this book was written just after the Reformation. So if you're familiar with history and everything like that, that'll make sense to you. If you're not, go ahead and Google it, because why not learn more, right? Expand the mind, stretch the brain. All right, let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. We are going to take a look at the weekend box office, uh, and those links are down below as well for those books. If you want to try and check those out for the holidays and pick those up for people, definitely recommending it. All right, so this week I got out to see two films. Out of those two films, uh, we're going to take a look and see kind of where they landed in the weekend box office because that's what's going to tell us what you guys saw this weekend. So let's go ahead and move into the news segment right now. Bah, boom. There it is. How about that? All right. So coming in this week, we're going to take a look at the weekend box office report top five and see what you guys were watching. And then if you have any comments on these films, if you saw the films, let us know in the comment section. Or if you're surprised by any of the numbers, again, hit up the comment section. That's what it's for. All right, here we go. Coming in at number five, we have Mortal Engines at 7,501,000. Number four, Ralph Breaks the Internet at 8,589,000. Number three, Dr. Seuss's The Grinch at 11,580,000. Number two is The Mule at 17,210,000. And coming in in the number one spot, swinging in, it is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse with $35,400,000. So, wow, wow, wow for Mortal Engines, right? This film, now I was able to see Mortal Engines. I saw Mortal Engines and the Mule. So stay tuned after the news segment for my thoughts on those films. Mortal Engines had a budget of around $100 million and its opening weekend, it made $7.5 million. Woo, stink fest. This movie, spoiler alert, guys, it was just not good. Um, I was very excited for this film. This might be my most disappointing film of 2018. Uh, it might not be, but right now, just offhand, just kind of thinking back really quick, I'm trying to think of a movie that I was really excited to see because it looked cool in the trailers. And then when I walked out of the theater, I was just like, that was a bummer. And right now, Mortal Engines is at the forefront of my mind. So it's going to take that spot right now as the most disappointing movie of 2018 right now. Um, but that could change when I look over all the films we've talked about on this channel over the last year. But right now, man, this movie was not good. So to see it tank like this with $7 million, whew, there's this movie's going to lose money for the studio. That's for sure. Um, so stay tuned for my thoughts on why this movie was such a stink fest. I mean, we're talking, we're talking some hot garbage slinging around on the screen for this one, guys. It was just not good. Very disappointing. Um, it had potential. Did not reach its potential. Um, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Not surprising that that is still there in the top five. Enjoyed this one a lot. Um, you can check out my review for that in the movie review playlist. Dr. Seuss is the Grinch. 
I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, yeah, check my review out for that as well. It's a great Christmas movie. I thought it was a great add-on to the the whole world of the Grinch and what we know of the Grinch and everything else. Uh, and I, I like some of the new things that they did to keep the story fresh, to keep the character fresh, to keep the town of Whoville fresh. And just overall, really well done. So if you haven't seen the Grinch yet, now is the time, right? It's Christmas season. Get your family together. Or even if you don't have a family, you can go see it. If you're like me and you're single, just go see it because it's no big deal. Like it's a good movie. So go see it. Dr. Seuss is the Grinch. The Mule, really impressed with the performance that Clint Eastwood gives in The Mule. You'll hear my thoughts again after this. Um, but definitely, definitely impressed with his performance. It has a slight hiccup towards the end of the second act, moving into the third act that kind of jostled me and went, hmm, that's an odd choice. But otherwise, uh, Clint Eastwood's performance in The Mule, really, really good. And Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, haven't seen it yet. Still really want to get out to see that. I might actually see that today after the show or later this week. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. But with all of the films coming out this week that you'll hear about later, I'm going to have to get into the theater this week to see it because it's just going to be nonstop good films from here on out for the rest of the year. Um, But Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, not surprised at all. Early buzz online was really positive. Rotten Tomatoes score. Everybody, critics and audience alike, scored it pretty well. So Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Everybody loves a Spider-Man film unless it's like, you know, Spider-Man 3 or The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But otherwise, Spider-Man does really well. And even those films did kind of well, but not that well for Spider-Man. So really enjoyed The Mule. Really enjoyed Clint Eastwood's performance in The Mule. Mortal Engines just disappointed me. I am going to recommend you guys check out Ralph Breaks the Internet and Dr. Seuss's The Grinch, but go ahead and check out my full reviews for those on the movie review playlist. Um, not too not too much else is really surprising me in the top 10, right? We've got Green Book is in the top 10. It came in at number 10. It plussed about 34 theaters, so it got added to a couple more theaters. So it's still hanging on. I still want to see that. Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald is still in theaters. Uh, coming in at the number nine spot in its fifth week. Um, and it's still doing really well there. Now, again, I really enjoyed that movie. It wasn't a perfect film. It did have some issues, but overall, as far as the Harry Potter world is concerned, I enjoyed it. Instant Family still holding on in the top 10, coming at number eight, Bohemian Rhapsody at number seven, and Creed Two at number six. Instant Family, we've talked about it before. I haven't seen it, but again, it's the holidays. It's a family movie, right? It's been getting really positive word of mouth online, good, strong, like Rotten Tomatoes and stuff like that. So, you know, Overall, it's looking pretty good. So check out my reviews for Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, Bohemian Rhapsody, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. And then right after the news, we're going to take a look at Mortal Engines and The Mule. But if you saw Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, if you saw Green Book, if you saw Instant Family or Creed 2, leave those comments in the comment section below and let us know what did you think of those films? Should people consider seeing those this holiday or something else? Let us know in the comments section below. Below. Now we're going to move into the first news story. It ties in really well with what we just discussed here as far as the box office, because Hollywood Reporter uh, just dropped a news article about how the box office revenue has hit $11 billion in the U.S., guaranteeing a record for 2018. That's the headline from the Hollywood Reporter. So we're going to move from the weekend box office to just the box office in general for the year of 2018. So combined ticket sales, this article again in the description box below, combined ticket sales approaching $12 billion, even without a Star Wars movie. Now, as you'll hear after the movie reviews later in the show, there's still a lot of good films that are going to be hitting theaters this year, right? We've got six films, six films dropping this weekend and then a couple more next week. And then it's 2019. It's craziness. So we still have some strong contenders hitting theaters uh, before the year is over. And you'll hear which movies those are. Uh, But just real quick, let's take a look at this article. Because it's saying that even domestically as well as internationally, the percentages are up. And this is the first time in four years we haven't had a Star Wars movie uh, coming out this year to help the revenue. But we've still seen an increase. Uh, Foreign box office is up less than 5%. Um, which is fine. It's still going up though, but it's up less than 5%. And in 2018, the top earners were Black Panther, which grossed $700 million domestically. And then as we'll take a look here, they also had some other spots as well with Buena Vista. Um, Disney on the verge of acquiring 20th Century Fox. So we still have to wait to see kind of what's going to happen with Disney going forward as far as what their their take is going to be at the box office with all these new titles. 
But in here it says its global ticket sales have already crossed seven billion dollars for the year, and it's only the second time that any studio has done that. And this is the second time Disney's done it, right? It's been Disney both times. So great job by Disney and everybody over there. And that's Disney, Marvel, right? Pixar, uh, Disney Animation, right? So it's all of that coming together, and it's giving them a big, big take. So just real quick. With 19 days left to go, the article says 2018's revenue is running 10% ahead of last year. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good news, right? So that means that people are getting out and they're spending their money, right? Maybe they feel a little bit more confident in this economy that we have right now, and they're able to get out and enjoy more things, which is what you want, right? When you go to work and you work really hard and you make that money, you want to be able to spend that money on stuff you enjoy, right? So seeing that people are able to get out to the theaters more with 10%, right? 10% more than last year. That speaks pretty well to not just the quality of films that are coming out, which it says the quality of films has got to be pretty good because people are spending money. But it also suggests that people are a little bit more confident in their spending and they feel they have a little bit more to spend at the movies, right? So that's a good feeling. That shows some stability as far as what people are assuming is happening with the economy, which in my opinion is a good thing. So let's just take a look really quick here at what we have domestically for the box office. So Black Panther coming at number one with over 700 million, uh, Avengers Infinity War, Incredibles 2, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Deadpool 2, Dr. Seuss's The Grinch, Mission Impossible Fallout, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Solo, A Star Wars Story, and Venom. Those are your top 10 domestic box office earners so far for 2018. So there you go. Real quick again, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Incredibles 2, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Deadpool 2, Dr. Seuss is the Grinch, Mission Impossible Fallout, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Solo, A Star Wars Story, and Venom. Now, how many of those are Disney? Well, Black Panther is one. Avengers is two. Incredibles 2 is three. Uh, then we have coming down to Ant-Man and the Wasp is four. Solo, a Star Wars story is five. So five out of the 10 top domestic box office earners are Disney. Boom. There you have it, right? That's what's working for them. That's what's getting them over the hump of that $7 billion is coming out with strong films like these and franchises that people are enjoying. What's not to like about that, right? They're making money and they're making quality products for us to enjoy in theaters on the big screen or, you know, on DVD and Blu-ray once they're released and we can go pick up the physical copies. Pretty good stuff. So let me know, what do you think about those figures? What do you think about the domestic box office right now coming in 10% higher than last year? What does that say about the economy? Let us know in the comments section below. And even if you don't care about numbers and math and money and all that stuff with the economy. Just let us know what was your favorite film so far this year that you've seen. 2018, it's wrapping up, folks. It's almost Christmas, and then it is going to be New Year's. Where did 2018 go? I don't know, but it flew by. How about that? All right, we're going to go ahead and move now right into the movie review section, and then right after that, don't go anywhere, because we're going to talk about what's hitting theaters this week. We have a lot of movies, good movies, hitting theaters this week, and then we're going to take a look at weekend or we're going to take a look at what's hitting dvd and blu-ray this week for your home theater we're going to take a look at certified rad which is a christmas certified rad for everybody since this is the last one for 2018 and then i'm also going to share the last five christmas songs for your holiday playlist for your christmas eve party or whatever type of gathering you have where you got to put the music together and that will be it for this live episode right here on YouTube for 2018. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a look at the mule and we're going to take a look at mortal engines right now. And then, like I said, we'll be right back. We're going to jump into what's hitting theaters this week, DVD this week, certified rad and five more. So that'll be a total of 15, five more Christmas songs for your Christmas playlist this year. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Let's take a look at the mule and mortal engines right now. It's the future and the globe has been destroyed by war. In this post-apocalyptic world, cities are on wheels, literally fighting for supplies, food, and land. They are all fighting for survival outside of a wall built in the east that London is looking to tear down. So, does Mortal Engines deliver on the excitement and adventure hinted at in the trailers? Or should we just watch the trailers instead? Let's talk about it in this review. The story begins by explaining how the world has become what it is. The 60-minute war has literally destroyed the globe as we know it and created something very different. The West has built cities on wheels that literally are just moving around trying to find something, anything. 
everything that sustains life or enhances the weaponry used to survive. The East, on the other hand, has built a wall to keep the West out to sustain their way of life and their resources. And towards the end of the second act, into the third act, we discover that the West's big plan is to destroy that wall and move into the East's paradise. However, a small band of rebels will stop at nothing to try and prevent the West from destroying that wall and moving into the East, and this is the central conflict of the story. How will this small band of rebels stop the city of London from destroying the East Wall and taking over their paradise? Spoiler alert, most of the rebels don't stop the city of London. In all, this film felt very similar to other B post-apocalyptic films, right? Like Judge Dredd, circa 1995, or Waterworld, etc. The characters in this film all felt like caricatures, and the outfits were all outlandish. For example, in one of the scenes, we see a trader who is selling humans to other humans in this little mobile town, this gathering of sorts, and the trader is wearing a jacket, and that suit jacket is made of buttons like actual shirt buttons. Okay, moving on. Other characters in this film are just introduced with little to zero introduction. And I'm given the impression that they're important for some reason, but in this film we don't really ever understand that reason, because for the most part they're not around for very long. There's also a separate plotline for a robot who was once a human that died and then was brought back as like this robot-human hybrid thing, and it's completely unnecessary in this story. This whole plot of the robot-human thing chasing Hester, who's one of the main characters, was probably important in the book. However, in this film, he's very much, again, unnecessary. So really the whole point of his character was to give her back a necklace that her mother gave her. However, that could have been avoided. He could have just given her the necklace when he found her as a kid and been like, here, hold on to this, don't lose it. And then we could have just completely removed that whole plot point from the story because again, it's unnecessary. He's chasing her to kill her because she broke a promise. And then he stops because he, a once human, now robot, kind of human killing machine is about to kill the guy she's with, but he realizes he shouldn't kill her or him because they're in love. So murderous robot that was once a human is defeated by love. If that sounded confusing, that's because it kind of was in this movie and it made zero sense. The biggest issue that I saw in this film was that there's just too much story to tell in one movie. We rush through the story that we get, we rush through the character development, because in this film there's almost zero character development. People again are introduced with little to zero introduction, and then they're almost immediately removed. Everything in this movie looked like a sci-fi channel production instead of a big Hollywood blockbuster special effects driven movie. And at times some of the dialogue felt like it was written directly for the young adult movie going audience. Short, deliberate, borderline cliche words tossed about by actors who I believe were directed to overact. Also towards the end of the film, there's a big reveal about who Hester's father is that fell right in line again with the nature of this film being borderline cliche and predictable and it did get an eye roll from me in the theater. Additionally, again, in this film, and maybe it's different in the book, but in this film, I don't recall her ever being on a hunt for who her father is or who her father was. So the big reveal was kind of like, what, why, what, where is this coming from? Why is this necessary? Again, it made no sense, kind of weird. Mortal Engines is playing at your local movie theater right now, and I am not going to recommend a big screen viewing of this film. By the time the credits rolled, I believe that if we split this film into two or even three films, we could have gotten a much better overall story by focusing on less to deliver more. However, that's not the case in this particular film because what we get is a convoluted mess of a story that moves through everything much too quickly and it develops almost nothing. And because of all these reasons, Mortal Engines is getting zero high fives from this guy. Mortal Engines is playing at your local movie theater right now. Maybe go see The Grinch instead. The internet had a profound impact on the small business marketplace. It took the brick and mortar store and replaced them with online stores that were able to deliver more, faster to its customer base. And that's where this story begins. So, does the mule deliver on the story of an elderly man trying to reclaim his life? Or is this story putting more than just the silver-haired audience to sleep? Let's talk about it in this review. Clint Eastwood is back in the director's chair and he has brought an all-star cast alongside him for this tale. The basic premise is a World War II veteran loses his home and farm 
to a competing business that finds success online. He then decides to go ahead and be a driver for a Mexican drug cartel to try and get the money back to buy his house out of foreclosure, as well as fix up some of the local spots that he frequents or the people in his town frequent. However, he's so good at his job, he continues to get more and more offers, which eventually lands him on the radar of the FBI and the DEA, which eventually lands in him being caught. Now, layered within this premise is an incredibly wonderful story about one character, Earl, played by Clint Eastwood. The other individuals we meet in the story all add something to the story, and they all add something to build on the character of Earl. But make no mistake, this entire movie is about one man and it's a character study on that one man. We get a complete look at who the character of Earl is, both at work, at home, with his family, on the road, dealing with drug dealers, dealing with law enforcement. So if the character of Earl doesn't work, this film would not work. And I'm happy to report that Clint Eastwood does a phenomenal job bringing this character to life in a fully formed, three-dimensional way for us to enjoy on the big screen. Will Clint Eastwood get an Academy Award nomination for his performance in this film? Maybe not, but that shouldn't stop us from talking about just how good of a job he does in this role. And the story doesn't waste any time. With a runtime that clocks in just under two hours, we get all the necessary information to really build out this story of a man who put work in front of his family until that work lands him in jail. However, the story takes a curious pivot in the second act. The head of the Mexican drug cartel family that Clint Eastwood is driving for is killed by a fellow gang member who's part of his team. Now, normally that sort of thing wouldn't be too surprising in a story like this. However, in this case, it is a little weird because he's a lower level thug that's trying to make a name for himself and the family and just trying to get that one job to get some attention. So when he kills the leader of the crime family, who's played by Andy Garcia, and then we see him jump several ranks within the crime family, it's a little jostling because the story doesn't really do anything to kind of set that moment up. It kind of takes away from another character who probably would have been better utilized to kind of kill the Andy Garcia character to kind of keep the story fluid and keep everything moving forward. And it's because of this one moment and this one pivot in the story that eventually leads to the how and the why Earl is captured. And everything leading up to that point felt natural for the world that we're in for this particular story. But again, this weird pivot happens. And from the pivot, everything grows much darker. Everything gets more serious. The death occurs. And then it's just a mad race in the third act to the finale. The entire third act just flies by. So we've got the first two acts, which are setting up the story wonderfully about a man who is late in life trying to reclaim his life. And then the third act hits and it's just sprinting to the finish line. And again, it's a very dynamic shift in this story that really kind of caught me off guard and kind of jostled an otherwise fluid and well-developed and well-paced story. The Mule is playing at your local movie theater right now, and I'm actually not gonna recommend a big screen viewing of this film, but I will recommend you check it out once it's available on Redbox or your preferred video streaming service. Like I said, Clint Eastwood does a great job of bringing the character of Earl to life, and he really puts on a class for how to do character development. However, that pivot late in the second act really kind of draws my attention away from everything that was working really well and so because of that, I can't give the mule all the high fives. Also, the story doesn't really do much to build on any of the other characters in this movie. They all feel thin and two-dimensional. So I won't be giving it both high fives either. So instead, the mule will be getting one high five from this guy. The mule is playing at your local movie theater right now. All right, <clears throat> and we are back. That was my thoughts on Mortal Engines and The Mule. So there you go. There there you go. If you want to go see those films, you can go ahead and check those films out. But you heard my recommendations on whether or not you should actually hit up the theaters for those films and spend your hard-earned dollars and your time. But I will say The Mule, you should definitely check out once it's available on DVD or Redbox or your preferred streaming service. Because Clint Eastwood, again, he gives a really great performance in that movie. But Mortal Engines, whew, you can skip that entirely. All right. So real quick, let's just take a look at what's hitting theaters this week, what's hitting DVD this week for your home theater, certified rad, and then we'll finish it off with the, my last five, my last five Christmas song recommendations for your holiday playlist. So that's a total of 15. If you go back to last week's episode and then you go back to the week before, 
Each episode had five songs that I recommended. So you can go ahead and check those out to build out your playlist. There'll be a total of 15 songs to help make your Christmas celebrations just a little bit more jingle jangly. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's hitting theaters this week right now. So here we go. We have Bumblebee, Welcome to Marwin, uh, Holmes and Watson, Mary Poppins, Aquaman, and Second Act. Now, out of these six films, I'm actually looking forward to all six of them. Um, Bumblebee has looked pretty good in the trailers and Haley Steinfeld is a really talented actor. So I'm looking forward to seeing Bumblebee. Welcome to Marwin. I have been sold on this film since the first trailer. Um, it's had three trailers. All three of the trailers have looked great. I cannot wait to see welcome to Marwin. looks like Steve Carell is really going to bring a strong performance. And I also like the animation style that gets mixed in with the live action and bringing this town of Marwin to life that Steve Carell's character creates if you haven't seen the trailers for that, go ahead and check out the trailer um, or go ahead and check out my trailer review in the trailer review playlist, because as you saw, I do throw some of the clips from the trailers in my review. Mary Poppins Returns. Cannot wait to see Mary Poppins Returns. The music in it. I mean, just that first teaser trailer where you just hear the orchestra swelling and just getting to that high point for that crescendo as we're kind of watching the kid fly his kite. I was like, I'm in. I'm sold. It sounds like classic Disney. The music in it sounds great. I cannot wait to see this film. Uh, Holmes and Watson, as well as Second Act, both of these films look like you'll just be able to kind of walk in, turn your brain off, and just have a good time with these characters in this story. Um, Holmes and Watson, obviously, just a straight-up comedy uh, about you know Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, and then Second Act looking more like just a fun kind of comedy about people, not necessarily like a straight-up comedy, but a comedy about people, like a drama comedy about kind of finding and repurposing your life and finding that new meaning to your life and then moving forward. So both of those films look like they're going to be good. And then Aquaman, looking forward to Aquaman, right? The trailers have sold me. Uh, it looks like it's just going to be this wild, crazy underwater world where we got all kinds of crazy sea monsters that we've never even seen before come into battle. I loved it. I love the trailers, especially the most recent one. So definitely looking forward to Aquaman. So there's six theaters, six movies coming out in theaters for you guys this week. On DVD and Blu-ray, we've got Venom, The House with the Clock and Its Walls, Predator, A Simple Plan, Life Itself, and Assassination Nation. So out of these films, I have seen and reviewed Venom, A House with the Clock and Its Walls, Predator, and A Simple Plan. I'm definitely going to recommend you guys check out House with the Clock and Its Walls. I saw that twice in theaters. I really liked it. I was surprised at how good it was as far as the story is concerned and the characters and the acting and everything else. Just a really solid film. I know it's more kind of Halloween-y, and even though it's Christmas time right now, but I'm still going to recommend you guys check out The House with the Clock and Its Walls. Really solid film. Really surprised me, so check that out. Predator, it was okay. Um, and Venom, I don't know what was going on in this movie. I still don't understand how it made so much money. But you guys can go ahead and check out my thoughts on those films in the movie review playlist. And A Simple Plan, I enjoyed A Simple Plan. My only issue with it was there were moments where the comedy and it kind of took it out of the seriousness and the thriller vibes that it was setting up. And it felt like some of the scenes in it that were supposed to be comedic were from a comedy movie instead of this more kind of dramatic thriller that was being set up from beginning to end. So it was like two... It was like one movie and then all of a sudden you'd have like a comedic moment from a comedy and the tone shifted. And I was like, that's weird. But otherwise, I enjoyed A Simple Plan. Um, Life Itself and Assassination Nation did not see. So if you did, go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comments section below about those two films. All right. We're going to go ahead and move now into the last segment. And that last segment is going to be Certified Rad. And then we'll take a look at the Christmas song. So this week for Certified Rad, really simple um, since this is the last live episode for 2018, I'm just going to go ahead and wish everybody a Merry Christmas up front. Boom. I even got my ugly Christmas sweater on, right? This is the ugly Christmas sweater episode. This is it, right? Snowmen with hair dryers. It doesn't get weirder than that, in my opinion. Well, maybe it does. I don't know. I didn't really look too much for crazy, weird, ugly Christmas sweaters this year. But I know that you can get weird with Christmas sweaters. So... If you've got weird Christmas sweaters that are super ugly, go ahead and share your favorites in the comment section below. But this is my ugly Christmas sweater for ugly Christmas sweater episode live 2018 last episode here, here on YouTube. So really quick, just wanted to wish for certified rad this week. Just wanted to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Hope you guys are able to spend it with friends, family and loved ones. Hope you're able to kind of get out and enjoy some of the holiday events. 
right? Even if those holiday events are like the volunteering one, feeding the homeless, angel tree gifts and donations, um, whatever, helping the veterans, whatever the case may be, whatever kind of thing you do for the holidays, whether you go out and look at Christmas lights, whether you just you, you travel and go see family in different parts of the country or different parts of the world for the holidays, whatever your Christmas looks like, I hope you're able to enjoy it to its fullest. And I hope you're able to really just ring in some of the positive energy that happens every year around Christmas time. And for everybody else who is going to be at home with family and everything like that, if you've got kids down below in the description box, just for fun, I threw up Google Santa Tracker. So on Christmas Eve, if you want to like, you know, surprise the kids and be like, hey, I can tell you exactly where Santa is at. Down below in the description box, the Santa Tracker is there. Go ahead and click on that link. It'll take you right to the Google Santa Tracker which is just a fun thing that Google created just to kind of show you where in the world Santa is at during different parts of Christmas Eve delivering presents. So go ahead and check that out because spending time with friends, family, and loved ones, celebrating the holiday, celebrate being together and celebrating love, that is definitely certified rad. And then if you just want to have some fun with your kids or grandkids, check out the Google Santa tracker down below. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, just a goofy, silly thing, but it might add something like cute for the kids to enjoy kids or grandkids for this Christmas season. So there you go. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the five, that's right, five Christmas songs. We're gonna take a look at five more Christmas songs real quick, and then we will be out of here because long-winded Jeremy's taking over. We crossed the 30-minute mark. So real quick, the top five songs in no particular order that I'm gonna recommend for you guys to finish out 2018, to finish out your Christmas music playlist for your Christmas party. Coming in, again, in no particular order, we have Count on Christmas by Bebe Rexa. I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I was not familiar with who this artist is. And then I heard this Christmas song and I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. Really dug the energy. It's positive, upbeat, pop Christmas goodness. This is definitely going to add just that fun energy to your party. So go ahead and check out. You can count, count on Christmas. Add that to your playlist by Bebe Rexa. It's just a fun Christmas tune just to kind of keep that energy going as your evening progresses. Next is coming up to us. This is for everybody who's like, you know, I just really want to round out the playlist and I want to rub some soul all over the playlist just so it doesn't feel like one pop tune or one jazz tune after another. I want to kind of round it out. I want to rub some soul on the evening and just let people feel a little bit grown. That is going to be happening courtesy of Lou Rawls. And that is going to be the song Merry Christmas Baby. So add that to your playlist as well. Merry Christmas Baby by Lou Rawls. Next up, I know nobody wants to be the bad guy, right? The party is over. Maybe people just aren't getting the hint, right? You got to go. At some point, you got to go, right? The Christmas parties can't go on forever. So what do we do, right? You don't want to be the bad guy and walk up to people and be like, hey, get out of here. You got to maybe set the mood, right? Change the song structures up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to catch people off guard and we are going to throw a song on that they think they know, but it's going to surprise them. And that's going to be Chipmunks Roasting on an Open Fire by Bob Rivers. That's right. Comedic songwriter Bob Rivers has a song called Chipmunks Roasting on an Open Fire, which is basically the Christmas song by Nat King Cole, except it starts off with chipmunks roasting on an open fire, right? And it goes through the whole thing. It's great. I'm definitely recommending you guys do that. It'll catch everybody off guard. They'll be like, wait, what are we listening to? Then you can stop the song. You can let everybody know, hey, thanks for coming by. The evening's almost over. Then you can throw on Nat King Cole's The Christmas Song, and that should definitely let everybody, because you just told them, right? When you caught them off guard, that should let everybody know it's time to go. All right. So then it's going to be Nat King Cole's The Christmas Song. Coming in number four, again, just another fun pop Christmas tune that you can have playing underneath everything as the evening progresses is coming to us from Britney Spears. And that's my only wish this year. Just a fun, upbeat, jingle jangly good time for Christmas. And again, it just really just fills out the energy as kind of everybody's milling about the party, doing whatever it is they want to do for Christmas. That is going to be Britney Spears, My Only Wish, this year. And number five, this isn't for your Christmas party playlist per se. This is more for that moment. Once you and that special someone, you and your lady are driving home, whatever the case may be, you get home, you just want to take a minute to show her or show him or whatever the case may be that you appreciate them. Whether you're a lady leading the charge, whether you're a man leading the charge, it doesn't matter. Once you get home after all of the partying and celebrating is done, you just want to take that special moment with that special someone and just kind of enjoy the holiday together. 
I got the song for you right now. You can just do a quick slow dance in your living room or in your kitchen or wherever you want to do it. But this song is going to help you guys just enjoy each other this holiday season after all the rat race is done, after all the shopping is finished, the presents are wrapped, the parties are over. It's just you two alone. This is the song for you guys. And that's going to be your All I Want for Christmas by Al Martino. Al Martino, your All I Want for Christmas. That's going to help set the mood so you guys can enjoy the holidays together and just remind you that all of the craziness is done. And now you have each other to enjoy the holiday and Christmas spirit and everything else right there together. So check out those five songs real quick. Well, it's five, six, really. But Count on Christmas, Bebe Rexa, Merry Christmas Baby, Lou Rawls, Chipmunks Roasting on an Open Fire, Bob Rivers, The Christmas Song, Nat King Cole, My Only Wish This Year, Britney Spears, and finally, to finish your evening, You're All I Want for Christmas by Al Martino. So there is your Christmas songs. I'm Jeremy Bernanski. Thank you guys so much for joining me this year, 2018, to talk movie news, movie reviews, and a little bit more. Hope you guys had a great year. I know I enjoyed every Monday coming online and talking movies with you guys. And then to everybody that's been leaving comments in the comments section over the course of the year, I've really enjoyed engaging with you guys as well in the comments section. So hopefully we can keep that up and we can finish 18, 2018 strong. So have a great Christmas, everybody. I hope you have a happy new year's, no matter who you're spending it with, no matter where you are in the world, right? I hope you're able to enjoy the Christmas season and ring in 2019 with those that you love and those that you care about with all the smiles and positive energy that you guys can muster. So there you go. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'm Jeremy Bernanski. I'm going to take my ugly Christmas sweater and I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to let you guys get back to your Monday. So thanks again, everybody, for joining me here every Monday on YouTube at 10 a.m. PST this past year to talk movies. I hope you guys again have a great Christmas and a happy new year. All right, everybody, I'm out of here and we will talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Bernanski with Bernanski's Vlog and you've just finished watching another brand new episode right here on YouTube. Did you enjoy it? Oh, you loved it, fantastic. Since you loved it so much, go ahead and give me that thumbs up because the thumbs up helps people who like movie related shows find this movie related show right here on YouTube. Also, don't forget to click subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when new content drops. For example, I made a short film and you can check it out right over there and any other number of things, DVD reviews, movie reviews, etc. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Monday at 10 a.m. PST right here on YouTube. Take care. Bye-bye.